Hello there. Mighty glad you've joined me for another cup of refreshing water. I'm Pam Fussell. We're from Dallas, Georgia. I want to jump right in. Today I'm going to finish our lesson on the judgment seat of Christ. I was teaching on heaven. I took a branch off to the judgment seat of Christ because that took place in heaven. And now I'm going to finish up the judgment seat of Christ before I go back to teaching on heaven. I'm going to do it really different today in that I'm going to read practical daily living for us to, you to look at yourself, me to look at myself, and, and to say, am I earning gold or am I earning stubble? Because we will stand before God one day and give an answer to all of it. So I'm doing this to get it in your mind and you can watch yourself and go, ask God for help. So the first one I'm gonna start with is the gold, silver, and precious stones. Number one, Saying something to or about someone and your whole purpose is to bless them, encourage them, strengthen them, uplift them if they're falling away from God and you come alongside and help them. Um, if anything that you do that's blessing and good is gold, unless you're doing it to manipulate someone, to get maybe something from them or to make them like you. The whole purpose is about yourself. That's stubble. <clears throat> Being welcoming, particularly in a church. I, I say that because it's so hard for people to be kind and welcome one another. They're so insecure, they tend to think, well, could somebody come welcome me? Somebody make me feel good. But if we can be outside of ourself, pardon me, and go to a visitor, go to someone that's down and depressed, someone that's come into the church that you don't know, and you go with the whole purpose to welcome them and perhaps influence them to continue coming to church for the purpose of being saved. That is gold. Choosing to treat all others the way that you want to be treated. This takes some thinking. Okay, how do I want to be treated? You know, here a lot of times we we do something in a group and we are at work or at church or in the family and we wish somebody would say out loud to us to the whole group did you see how good they did that job well if that's what we want if we will give it to others not so they'll give it back to us but because we're doing it for god's glory and they're good then that's gold you see how easy this is and yet on the flip-flop, how unselfish it has to be to be earning gold. Next, show mercy when someone sins. Instead of gossiping about them and beating them down emotionally. This one's a hard one because we human beings, when we hear somebody's done something bad, we like to talk about it. And we like to tell other people about it. And we get down on them and we share and they, everybody gets down on them. That is wood, hay, and stubble. But to show them mercy and kindness. Yeah, you knew they sinned. Yeah, you knew they did wrong. But you didn't go and tear them to pieces to their face or to others. Then that's gold. Especially if you prayed. You didn't say anything and you prayed for them. And you kept praying for him. That's gold. Tell him the truth always. Speaking truth in gentle kindness with the purpose of helping them. This is a hard one. Because sometimes people need to be helped. And you go, you have to pray, God, do you really want me to say this? Will it help them in the long run? 
And if so, give me the words to be able to say it the way that you want me to. Because you don't want to hurt anyone. What makes your opinion more important than theirs? But if you know that it's hurting their life, you have to hear from God. Because your, your purpose has got to be to help them not to make it better for yourself somehow. I think you're getting the idea. Telling others about the salvation through Christ, that's gold. But not preaching at them. Uh-uh, preaching at people is irritating. Don't preach at them. Don't tell them how it is. Don't tell them all you know about everything. That's not good. That won't do any good. They'll just turn away from you. But if you were to do something in love that they don't expect, then that could give you an open door. Because they're thinking, no, why would, why would that person be nice to me? Why would that person give me a gift? And then if they ever come back and open the door, why did you do that? Because I love God and I care about you. Because the Lord told me to. Sometimes the Lord tells you to. But they'll always remember. And God will use that working in their hearts. Praying for others. Praying for salvation. For the soul of others. And not just your family. We tend just to want to just pray and care about our family. Or our friends. No, no, no. Yes, do that. Yes. But how about praying for every soul on the face of the earth? How about praying for every person that is old and about to die that is not saved yet? How about praying for the people in the world that are being martyred well, you, if they're killed, you can't pray for them, but you can pray for their family. But just pray for people that are being beaten up and, and set afire because they're Christians. Some people say, I don't know what to pray for. God bless my family. God help. Amen. No, no, no. <laughs> Get on in there. Think about somebody beside yourself. Really put yourself in their place and pray and care, then you've earned gold. If you really want to earn gold, pray for the people that hate you. And don't pray, God, get them. God, tell them. Pray for God to bless them. God, to help them. Help them grow in Him. Pray for God to help the relationship be better. To help you to forgive them. These are earning gold. How about giving money, cards and gifts, emails, sending emails to missionaries. I'm praying for you. I care about you. How about praying for your pastors? How about praying for the poor, ministries, the kids in orphanages? I mean, the list never stops. If you start praying and you care about other people, the list never stops. You could go on for hours. And everyone you've prayed for, the Lord is well pleased. And it's a powerful, it's the most powerful thing you can do. Sometimes it's hard to know when to give money, especially on the streets. You don't know who's playing the game, and there are games that they play. Being a pastor's wife, we've seen a many a game for a lot of years. And uh, usually we're able to figure out, okay, this, this is what they're doing. But there are times that you'll be going along and the Lord will speak and say, Give that one your last $20. Buy that one a pair of socks. 
So every time you do that, that's earning gold. And I have recently, I've just been finding scripture after scripture that's talking about really caring for and giving to the truly poor people, the truly widows, the truly orphans. Praying for yourself. Yes, you can pray for yourself, but there's er er areas, excuse me, there's areas to pray for yourself that's not selfish. For example, God, I find myself to be rebellious. Help me to submit to your will. God, thank you for showing you showing me my sins. Please forgive me. I give this up to you. I can't believe I did it. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me and help me never to do that again. Those are important, God. God earning goals. God, I have a bad attitude in this area. God, I see that I've really been using people to get my way. Forgive me and help me not to do that. Or how about this one? When I go to read your Bible, speak to me, Lord. Let me God, give, give me direction in my life. Guide me to stay on the right path. Help me to forgive others. I'm so selfish, God. Help me to see every time. God, I'm full of pride. Help me to overcome this pride. Help me to remember how much you hate pride. Do you see? I mean, just praying for yourself can go on and on for a long time. All of it is earning gold. All of it is changing you to be who God wants you to be. Listening to others as they're in their sorrow and encourage them, sending them cards, sending them scriptures. Most of the time they just want to be listened to. How about going the extra mile? For someone, especially if you have to sacrifice yourself for it, that's gold. Praying and studying God's Word for the purpose of growing closer to Him, getting to know Him more. Every moment you spend in time with Him, seeking His face, not just His hand, gimme, 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 is gold. Not being prideful about how much you know about the Word, and I'm going to add this, we mature Christians, we have to be very careful because we it's easy to fall into the area of pride. Oh, well, I study this much, and I know this much, and oh, no, no, that's not correct. I know the right way. We have to be very careful about that, or we'll, in our knowledge and our closeness to God, we'll start earning stubble. I see I'm, I'm getting very long. So I'm going to stop right here. They're so, these are so good. Faithfulness to God, your mate, your family, your church, your friends. Physical labor to help others, to help the church, to help the elderly, to help those you think don't like you. Controlling your mouth and yourself to keep peace in the family, with your mate, with your children, at your church, at work. Keeping your mouth shut. Put God first, your mate second, your children next, then other things. Do it as the obedience to the word. Treat your mate as God's word says. Never talk negative. Don't ever talk negative to your mate. Don't ever put them down and tell them where they're doing everything wrong. Oh my goodness, if you want to destroy them, that's how you would do it. And you'd be earning lots and lots and lots of stubble. You're supposed to uplift your mate and help your mate in all areas. You don't correct them and put them down. If you do, they're going to start building a wall. 
and you'll be living in the same house, but you won't love each other, you won't talk, you won't have any giggling and flirting, you won't have good sex, nothing, because one or both of you just have to say what's on your mind. Hmm. Teach your children about God's love and about His Word. Pray for them constantly. Guide them to walk with God. Don't just say, don't do this and don't do that. Show them how to do it. Let them see you praying. Let them see you studying the Word. Honor all those who God has placed in authority over you. Your husband, your boss, your pastors, your parents, the policemen. Honor them because that's what the Word says. So, that's a lot of different things that we can be earning gold, silver, precious stones. Okay, what about the other side? The wood, hay, and stubble. That one was easier to hear than this one's going to be, and I'm going to go through it quickly. Gossiping negatively about anyone. Some people say, well, it was true. It doesn't matter if it's true. You're supposed to not do it. We all do it. But if we pray about it every day, the Lord helps us to remember, don't open your mouth unless it's to glorify God and help others and bless others. Okay. Only teach the Bible so others will honor you. Not God. So just so they'll see how much you know. Wood, hay, and stubble. Using words to downgrade anyone. Manipulating by words and gifts to get your way to gain influence or position. God knows the heart. Lying for any reason. Demanding things to be done your own way. That's pure pride. There's so many, if you want to shock yourself, do a study on pride completely through the Bible. You'll see how much God hates pride, and that earns a lot of wood, hay, and stubble. And one of them is demanding things to be done your way. Telling everyone all you know. That's pride too. Uh, treating others as if they are beneath you. That's pride. They're not as smart as me. They didn't get the college education as me. They don't make as much money as me. I mean, it could be in all kind of areas. Any time we think we are above anyone is wood, hay, and stubble. Getting angry and bitter because someone didn't treat you as good as you thought you should have been treated. <whistles> this one goes on day by day. And we can tell that it's happening to us because we get angry. How dare them talk to me that way? How dare them treat me that way? How dare them not give me my raise? How dare? What in the world? They can't treat me like that. All of that is pride. All of that is wood, hay, and stubble. Purposely hurting others' feelings. Or know you accidentally hurt them, but you don't go back and make it better. Oh, well, so what? I heard him. Somewhere you got to... If you remember you've heard him or figured it out later, go, go back. Go back and let him know somehow. A call, a text, a, a card, a hug, and say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way, or I'm having troubles. Next. Thinking you are better, oh, I've already covered this. P putting rich or educated people all above all others, like the Bible is talking about uh, someone wanted to sit in the front of the church or sit at the head table, uh, always wanted to be the one that's up front and honored and blessed, and but others know they can sit over there, they can sit in the back on the floor. I mean, we never would say that, but sometimes we have that attitude. Demanding to be treated special instead of treating others special. 
criticizing anyone and criticizing denominations, making fun of and picking on others, not being content and thankful for what God has given you, griping. He's given you all these blessings and all you can think of, well, I don't have this and I want that and he didn't do this. I mean, you know how we do. Gripe, gripe, gripe. And God's saying, I'm the one that gave you those gifts. Do you not appreciate them at all? Wood, hay, and stubble. Starting trouble in work, in your families, extended family, in, well, in your home families, uh, in the church. Starting trouble by whispering, criticizing, judging, sharing lies, giving your opinion on what you think everybody else should be doing. Would hand stuff. Neglect the open door. Somebody opens the door and God says, share Christ, and you walk away. Would hand stuff. Neglect open doors to work and use your talents for God. You don't have to be told by God, do this in the church. If you see a need, that is God whispering and saying, I want you to do that. I'll help you to do that. Demand open doors so you can use your talent and be up front. We are always amazed at how many people want to do something for God as long as they get to be up front. But they, no, I shouldn't say never because there, there is some people in this church right now who are willing to pick up trash, clean toilets, do the, make, uh, clean the flower beds, work out in the hot sun. They're willing to do that. That's gold compared to uh, no, God doesn't want God doesn't want me to do that, but He would like me to be up front and teach a Sunday school class. See, we just are so blind to who we really are, neglecting God, not reading His Word, not going to church, all because He's not that important to us. Would hand stubble, telling dirty or racial jokes, sexual sins. Now, I'm going to cover, we know what this, you know, adultery, we know about those sexual sins, but I'm going to cover sexual sins that we as Christians can fall into without realizing fully what we're doing and that we're earning wood hand stubble. Watching dirty movies, watching dirty TV, social media, Okay, all of this falls into sexual sins, so I'm not going to say sexual every time. Magazines, particularly pornography, forcing a mate to do something he or she doesn't want to do, dreaming of having sex with someone other than your mate. Um, I think you've got the idea. Those things are in the head and nobody sees but God sees. Refusing to forgive others. No, they don't deserve to be forgiven. Well, we've talked about that. <laughs> That's with hand stubble. Speaking harmful, degrading words to your mate and children and your family. You can destroy your mate, your children, with your words. Lack of kindness, patience, each time, resentful, unloving, mean, doing God's ministry in the easiest, laziest way instead of giving your best at all times, or doing it for personal gain. Then I close with this scripture. Whew! Those are heavy and I hope I'm going to be thinking on them, and I pray that the Lord would help us to remember. 1 Corinthians 11:31. But if we would judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. That's saying that we should pray daily, 
judge ourselves, look and see what we're doing, what is our attitude, God show me. Sometimes we don't even notice until we say, God, did you see anything today? And there it is. When you stand before God, will there be any sacrifice or hard work or stopping your pride? Will any of that, when you stand before God on Judgment Day and your life is shown, Will the hard work be worth it? Will the sacrifices be worth it? I think so. I think so very, very, very much. Then I, I ask this question. Ask yourself, what impact am I making in this world for God's kingdom? What impact am I making in this world for God's kingdom? Who have I impacted? How did I impact them? Did I impact them for good? Did I impact them for harm? Has anyone turned away from God in the church because of me? God forgive us. You only have one life to live for God, to make a difference for Him and for His kingdom. Let's give it our all. Let's give Him our all. Don't give up. It is going to be worth it. When we stand before Him, I'll see you there, and you'll see me there. And you might even say, well, she taught all this stuff. Look what she did. But I'm just like you, a human being, and I'm trying. And you're trying. Let's keep trying together. With the help of God Almighty, let's keep trying together. I pray that God helps you to see and remember and to work every day of your life to earn gold. Till next week when I'll be picking up on heaven and what's it going to be like there for us. What are we going to be doing? Till then, bye. I love you all.